Hello everyone, Salam alaikum, welcome to the session. My name is Amin and I will uh, talk about the robot operating system, uh, which is an open source platform for robotic software developers. Um, so we will talk uh, about uh, what's ROS, how ROS works, uh, why to use it, and uh, we will talk also about ROS2, the new version of ROS, and uh, uh, some examples how to move a robot using uh, ROS and Python. Uh, so uh, don't worry uh, for those who uh, don't know programming, like Python programming, you can follow because it, it, it's just uh, uh, an example and you will see the, the, the result uh, directly in the, in the simulated and real robot, okay? So <clears throat> before starting, uh, I just want to introduce myself in the context because uh, uh, why I'm talking about software development in robotics uh, because I had a chance to uh, uh, to, to work on both sides, like in the hardware side and the software side in robotics. Uh, when you get the chance to uh, study both uh, fields, both domains, uh, you can like have a global view uh, to, 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 to understand exactly what is the best uh, practice to, to or what's the best solution for this problem. Uh, is, is it a solution from the hardware side or a solution from the uh, software side. I think this is interesting and now I'm pursuing a PhD in artificial intelligence and robotics and it gave me uh, a more um, another horizon uh, to use artificial intelligence into the robots. So this is maybe this is a hard way to to work, to, to enter in the in the robotics field because it takes more time and maybe for people who just want to uh, get a degree in three to four five years and get a job in a company or start a project, maybe they don't want to do all this stuff because uh, uh, usually in a team, uh, in a, like in the startup team or some <coughs> large industry team, we have a multidisciplinary team, some people from software, some people from the hardware part and they, some even some people from the mechanical side and they try to combine the, the effort. But when you uh, know some uh, like uh, electronics, some mechanics, and some software engineering. You can like talk with these people using technical terms, their technical terms, and they can understand you. Uh, and this can avoid a lot of uh, problems uh, in the in the like communication problems in the team. So yeah, this is just um, a glimpse. Okay, so let's see the. The robotics software developers, what they do exactly, they try to, they have three missions. The first one is to collect data from the sensors of the robot. Any robot, like oh, for all this type of robots, for example, here we have a ground robot or a drone, or an aerial robot or submarine robot or um, industrial arm. You just, the first thing to do is to, they have uh, sensors and you collect data from the sensors. So sensors is to observe the environment. Well, then we extract some useful information from this data. So we, we try to understand the environment. And the third step is to give orders or send orders to the actuators. And actuators is uh, like the motors. When you uh, command the robot to move or to grasp an object or do something to fly, for example, you're acting, you're acting on the environment. So this is why we, we talk in uh, robotic software about this paradigm, sense-linked act uh, paradigm, and we will try to shift our uh, thinking or programming thinking to this uh, sense-linked act paradigm. And this is basically what robotic software developers do in general. Okay, so let's start with ROS. So ROS is a, the name of ROS is Robot Operating System, but actually ROS is not an operating system because it's installed on top of another operating system. Uh, ROS, for example, is uh, installed on top of Linux, and Linux is an operating system. It will handle the low-level stuff of the system, and ROS is on top of it. So technically, ROS is not an operating system. And it's not a library. So some people think that some <clears throat> some people think that uh, ROS is the library that you can get your uh, you have a program for your robot, and you will include the ROS in the program to uh, do something. But actually, not. ROS is a full platform and. 
uh, it's not a library you can import in your code. So usually you need to um, sh modify your code to include it into ROS. So basically, uh, it's not just a library to import and call some functions. No, you, you have to ch change all your um, program thinking. Okay, the programming thinking. We, we will see that later. Keras also is not um, a simulator. Some, some people think that ROS is a simulator because when we talk about robotics, uh, about software development for robotics, people tend to think about simulation, but no, actually ROS is um, installed on the machine, on the robot, and it's commanding the robot. It's, it's, it's sending the orders to the robot motors, to the arms, to the hands of the robot, and so this is actually um, controlling the real hardware, the real robot. It's not uh, it's not only about simulation, of course we can do simulation, but it's also uh, controlling the real robot. And ROS also is not an artificial intelligence framework. Some, some people think that ROS is, because we talk about robots and robots are moving, we, we think that everything in robotics is uh, AI. But actually not, there is a lot of things in robotics which is not artificial intelligence. For example, uh, we can do navigation, we can do uh, mapping, we can do sensing, observing the environment, we can control the robot to, to fly, uh, we can control the motors, we can get data from the sensors. So all of this is about robotics, not about artificial intelligence. So ROS is not, a, it's not, it's not framework like a machine learning framework, like TensorFlow or Torch. No, or ROS is really an, an a platform for um, for using the robot for programming the robot. Okay, so what's exactly ROS? So ROS is a middleware. It's 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 here. It's, like it's it's on top of the operating system, and it's it's between the operating system and the user software. So it's a middleware. So the operating system basically what it does it uh, it, it will manage the memory. It will manage the file system, the uh, the low level stuff of the, of, of the system, the system command and interruptions, and and yeah, and the drivers of the of the systems. And ROS will uh, call this um, this the, this libraries from the, the operating system, the drivers, and your user will not communicate directly to the with the with the operating system, but it will communicate with ROS, and uh, ROS will simplify a lot of things. We will see that ROS will uh, simplify a lot of things for our software, so we can uh, like um, just uh, do. Uh, we can gain a lot of productivity during our programming because uh, there's a lot of things made in 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 the robot in the ROS ecosystems. Uh, for example, for example, ROS is a distributed platform, so it will manage the communication between different machines. And uh, if we have, for example, this, this is our robot, we have here the motors, and our robot here have a microcontroller or computer, small computer here, uh, that will command these motors. And we have some programs here, our programs here, and but we can have like split our programs. Some of them will be executed on the machine, and, and some of them will be um, executed on another computer, like a server, or a cloud, or a anywhere on the internet. Or so so. Uh, this is um, our program is distributed on, uh, is split it on seven different machines or processors. But uh, ROS will uh, take care of this. Uh, all of this. So for, for, for our robot here, it thinks that all the programs are executed inside the machine, but because ROS will make it transparent to this uh, to, 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 to this um, small uh, robot or small device on the robot, that uh, it, it would think that there is only uh, one program on, on the uh, executing our program executing on the machine, but uh, ROS will take care of the distribution of, of the system, and this is very interesting in many uh, applications. Also, ROS has uh, ROS has a lot lot of libraries and tools like visualization, simulation, uh, debugging, packaging, logging, and even some specific. Uh, libraries for robots like navigation, mapping, path planning. You see that this uh, this stuff are usually we do it every time. Every time we create a robot, um, like a mobile or ground robot, we need to do navigation, we need to do obstacle avoidance, we need to do path planning, for example. We need to do... Uh, so ROS include all of this uh, already. So we don't need to implement 
or, or every time implement the obstacle avoidance and configure the obstacle avoidance and uh, implement the navigation and and the path planning and mapping every time no no ross has um like a set of uh, of library stack which is standardized and all uh, usually um, uh, we, we use it directly uh, for for our applications and ROS is open source and that, that's great because uh, that's one powerful powerful um, aspect of ROS because it has a BSD license so we can use it for commercial use and educational use for free and that's why a lot of enterprises use ROS they don't have to to pay anything for for, for, for the will or the company that created ROS and this is a great and this is why ROS is now very um, spread on in the industry and research laboratories so yeah this um, basically this is what ROS can, can talk how it works but before that I, I want to show you some uh, a video about using ROS for example here we can see in this video uh, we have um, this robot uh, executing the ROS and here we can see the 3D representation of the of the robot and there is this, a camera here the camera is inside this this, this, this um, gripper and we can see the camera here and the real camera here 3D images and this is synchronized and this this is just, uh, uh, what I want to see that this uh, 3D representation and the camera node and all of this uh, calculation are used by uh, computed automatically by ROS so we don't need to create every time like uh, recreate this 3 3D programming, 3D representation. So maybe as a software developer for robotics, I don't know how to create 3D models on OpenGL and GPUs because uh, this is I, I use this directly from the from the from the ROS ecosystem, and this is uh, one powerful uh, things uh, from ROS. There is, for example, here we can see in this video. Uh, we have uh, this robot, which is a real robot, and we can see the 3D representation here, what the robot is seeing, and we can do some computational here, and this uh, 3D graphical programming is already made by a robot, by ROS. Uh, and so we don't have to care about this, we care about the robotic application, not about the 3D and the graphic uh, programming and the, the, the representation on all of this stuff. And this is, this is uh, a good, uh, good uh, say, a uh, good aspect or great aspect uh, from ROS. So how it works? Let's see, um, we have, uh, <coughs> for example, here, our program we will split our program into several processes or several small programs. We, we call them nodes and each node will do just one thing. Okay, just one thing. Like here, this node, I will just show the, the mouse. Okay, yeah. So this node here is the, it will communicate with the LiDAR and it will get the laser data from, from, from the, the hardware. Okay, so this node will do that just that this node for example will control the motors and only that and this is uh this is for getting the camera images for example this is for getting the battery level so we split our program into uh several process several nodes and the nodes will communicate together through what we call the topics uh, and this is uh about uh, this is using the paradigm of publisher subscriber uh paradigm um its design pattern is usually used in in software development and it's very uh, popular so uh, you can see this topic as a blackboard and this laser node will publish data or will uh, print data on this blackboard and this subscriber this motor node will read the data from the blackboard okay so uh, it will communicate it's in like an indirect communication laser node this node will publish data to this topic and it, and the motor will it gets the data from this topic it will like get automatically a notification that a new message is uh, is available and it will uh, send them directly this this new uh, information so 
this is like a, a one-way communication because here uh, data is uh, from the lazy node to motor node and motor can't like uh, and send another data if the motor node want to send data to this laser node we have to create another topic here and this motor will send topic and the topic will and the laser node will subscribe to this new topic okay so this is uh, one way to send data so uh, the topic uh, the, the publisher will send the message to the topic and the, the topic will broadcast all the um, this data to all the, the, the subscribers okay so it's broadcasting in one way and if we can have a lot of the nodes publishing on the same topic and the topic will broadcast the message to the node so it's uh, it's more for continuous communication like you have to send the data uh, every second like a gps every second you have a new gps position so so the node will send uh, in the topic and the topic will broadcast the gps position to the other process to the other nodes so this is one way of uh, of, of of communicating in rows and the other way is the service as we said that the node will send a request send a request to this node to this node and this node will get a response but this is like this is a block end communication like when this node send a request it, it will wait until it gets the res response so it will be blocked okay so uh, we can do anything before we get an answer and this is like usually used for small very small uh, functions okay for example opening something or shut down something or stopping something okay uh, because we can't uh, uh, let our nodes wait forever or be a blocker forever okay so we can't do this for uh, for gps uh, messages for example because every second we have uh, a new gps position and we can't every second stop our motor and every second stop our motor to get the gps so we use uh, the, the other way of, of communication so this is two uh, concepts of communication in, in rows between our nodes and we have also a lot of concept for example a package a package is only uh, just uh, uh, some uh, a couple of nodes a lot of nodes that have one uh, way of uh, uh, working together so we manage them in folders and these folders are called packages it's like uh, the python packages okay why using ROS? why using ROS? Now, this question maybe if you are already uh, a robotist and you are creating uh, some robots using Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you can say that I don't use, uh, I don't need ROS because ROS is a middleware and static on Linux, so you have to need a, a, a big microcontroller or big computer on board on the machine, and it will use more memory, more uh, CPU, and it will get more battery okay so it, it uses more energy so why using ROS and that's because in some situations we need to create big robots or robots that are processing a lot of data and ROS will allow us to uh, like gain productivity and create quickly more uh, bigger uh, and high level uh, softwares for our robots for example ROS um, will abstract the hardware the motors the sensors and all the hardware so we don't need to care about the hardware and communicating with the sensor because the robots will communicate with the motors and the sensors so for example if i create a robot with uh, and, uh, with an arduino and i have like for example a dc motor and dc motor is working with uh, direct current voltage and if i want to change this motor with a thermic muscle uh, which is uh, using the fuel or combustible or i want to use like a servo motor so i need to reprogram my uh, i will to change the program because the way of commanding of the way of controlling the dc motor is not the same way as controlling the servo motor or the thermic motor or the stepper motor but in ROS we don't care about that in ROS we see that just motor as an abstract thing and ROS will take care of this communication with the motor we only send the, the orders to ROS for example move the, the motor in a certain speed or velocity so ROS will translate this in the hardware and this is a big 
big impact. The, it has a big impact on the reversibility of the, the, the code. Sometimes the same code of controlling a drone will be used for controlling uh, a submarine robot because it has both the same thing. It has like three axes, X, Y, and Z, and the, even the submarines have the same thing. So sometimes we use uh, uh, the same program for controlling a ground robot that has having wheels to control uh, a ground robot having tracks, even if the hardware is not the same. But for ROS, it's the same. For, for us using ROS, it's the same thing. And this is a great, uh, and this uh, allows us to um, um, gain a lot of productivity. And this, this is why usually people prefer using ROS. Also, ROS will take care of the network layer. So, for example, we said that our nodes, our programs will communicate together, but uh, when we have like a, a publisher and subscriber in like a software engineering, we know that there, there's uh, maybe an RCP or socket communicating and we need to handle the TCP UDP packets. But in ROS, no, ROS will take care of this network layer. So we don't care about the RCP, we don't care about TCP UDP or socket or anything about that. We just uh, send messages to the topic and the topic will get uh, automatically uh, the message to the subscribers and we don't care even if the subscribers uh, is in, in the cloud or in the network server or uh, in the internet server for example we don't care about this transfer the throws will take care about that and this will uh, help us focus only on the on the robotics application for example grasping an object for example moving the robot uh, from one position to another position and we don't take care about the communication the network and the hardware and everything okay so this is uh, this will impact our productivity a lot, and also there's a lot of visualization st uh, stuff. There are a lot of uh, library libraries for path planning, for mapping, for visualization. So listen, every time we create a robot, we need to create a visualization thing uh, to 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 see if the robot is uh, uh, seeing our environment or seeing our. Um, I think uh, observing our environment in the in the correct manner. So we don't need to, every time to create a new visualization program. There, there is already a library for that in Rust, and this is also uh, this will increase the, the usability, reusability, and productivity of our software developers. Also, um, we don't. Um, like a topic when we, we use the publisher subscriber node here for example the first node uses C++ and the second node is using Python and uh, 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 the, there's no problem like we don't have to, to, to care about like a difference between the languages because the message will uh, get uh, transferred by ROS and ROS will informize this message through this topic and it will have the same format for example and this is a great thing. It 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 is good, and it will also uh, ROS help us to fast prototyping using simulators. And this um, good point in ROS is that when we simulate a robot in a ROS compatible uh, simulator, we can reuse the same code to um, execute it in the real robot because the hardware interface in the robot is managed by ROS and the simulator will uh, simulate this hardware interface and we will use the same interface which is the ROS, okay, the, the same middleware. So uh, that's why our uh, programs in the simulator can be um, can be um, transferred to the real robot without any changes, maybe not without any changes, but very small changes. Sometimes we just uh, change parameters. Sometimes we change some small stuff, not a lot of stuff, okay? Uh, of course, it depends on the, the situations, uh, but usually we can we can do like a very, very uh, realistic simulations, uh, usually for uh, ground robots, for example, we can use very um, uh, good quality simulators to transfer our robot automatically, not automatically, but almost with no change to the real robot and uh, this is a great thing um, yeah and also ROS will uh, handle the transform that, that, that all this you see all this joint here has like uh, uh, all this joints have we need to, to, to every time this for example this hand this this arm is moving 
uh, we need to recalculate every every frame for every joint here for example every point here every joint here has a position and the one once uh, you move like the arm of the robot you have to recalculate the position of every uh, like every finger every uh, hand every joint because everything is moving together and um, but but ross will take care of this calculation we don't have to to do this complex geometrical uh, or kinematical uh, kinematic uh, calculations and uh, this is like um, before it was like very painful to recalculate everything but now ross will recalculate everything and it, it will do do it like uh, very uh, fast because it's using c plus plus code so it's very uh, efficient and this is very uh, a good point for people working with this kind of robots like humanoid robots because it's very very um, easier now it's not easy but easier than before and th this is great about ROS okay so yeah and we can visualize everything here for example this is um, the, the graph the node graph and for example if if I say I have a bug and for example my laser node here need to publish to this topic this scan topic to communicate with the mapping uh, node and if there is a problem here for example I can see it uh, quickly because for example if I, I don't see here a link between the laser node and the uh, mapping node I, I know that there's a problem here in this scan in this topic in the laser topic and i can uh, quickly debug um, uh, uh, my code here for example uh, this is a great thing because it will uh, allow us to if we have a large very large code base and lots of nodes uh, for example hundreds of nodes we can quickly find uh, or eliminate the uh, hypothesis about debugging our our program and this is this is a great thing about ROS I, I really love it about ROS okay so yeah so uh, maybe we don't talk about this now maybe we just jump directly to the to the um, example section because it's uh, more interesting i think for people attending this, this uh, event so um, before just see the example some requirement to use ROS. so we, you need to have like a basic command linux command you, you need to, to know the basics very the, the very basics of linux linux command because you have to create packages uh, in the folders uh, of the ROS, and you have to know how to ta to, to use the command line in the Linux system, okay? Just the basics. You also need to, to know the basics programming in Python or C++ to use ROS because ROS is mainly using these two languages. Of course, you can use also Java, I think, but the, the, the main uh, languages in ROS using Python or C++, so it's a good thing to, to know uh, some basics, very basics in Python or C++, okay? And uh, it would be great also to know some basics about robot hardware okay so not electronic side but only you can for example uh, you want to know what's a sensor what's a lidar what's an odometry what's like a motor what's a motor how uh, what's the speed like a velocity speed what's the velocity of the motor because we will uh, use this to control our 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 motor and like this is just basic knowledge about robot hardware very basic knowledge about robot hardware to use ROS okay uh, this is like ROS is not uh, I think I think ROS is not very for a, a very very uh, beginners uh, like it's not uh, for people who never touch a program now i think ross has a minimal requirement for people knowing the minimal uh, stuff about programming and the minimal stuff about the what's a sensor and what's an actuator and this is like this is how the robotics uh, um, uh, software uh, is using the hardware so you you need to know some basics okay and uh, of course if you want to do a more a complex stuff uh, for example moving the industrial arms you, you need to know some geometry some kinematics it's good to know it uh, for example if you want to uh, to create a very um, large uh, code base in ROS you need to know optics oriented programming because it, it will uh, be very useful for, for you to, to to use it and to 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 practice it okay so but don't worry for for, for this example we don't need a lot of uh, 
laptop for a following example uh, we not only just basics basics of python okay so the objective here is to create a ROS node to move the robot forward okay let's say we have a robot okay let's say we have a robot and we want to move it forward like uh, uh, just forward okay and so um, we have uh, the, our program need to publish some messages to this topic comment velocity this is the, this is the comment velocity topic in ROS it's automatically created for for example in this robot and if this robot is running ROS it will have this topic comment velocity and it will be waiting for your command so you will uh, create this program to send this uh, velocity topics and uh, this velocity velocity commands is like um, uh, as, as we see just a refresher uh, velocities uh, and moving on, uh, in, in mechanics uh, velocity is the speed with the direction okay speed with the direction but we have two type of speed we have the linear speed and angular speed so if we want to turn the robot we will need to use the um, angular velocity and if we want to move the robot forward or backward we need to linear to use the linear velocity so here we will publish the linear velocity and the, in the command command file topic okay so let's do it i will launch uh, my here um okay so i'm on windows but i managed to to install uh, ROS on the windows system for linux this is handful because ROS one this uh, um, uh, this version of ROS is using only Linux so I I managed we, we can install it in uh, Windows system for Linux so to not switch uh, the, the system here so uh, I, I will enter in the um, directly uh, folder of ROS and I will create a new package um, with this command catkin create package and I will uh, give it a name. So let's name, for example, Robot Mover. Okay, Robot Mover. This is uh, the name of the package. So this is uh, the the name of the um, uh, the folder we will create, and uh, we will need to 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 write the dependencies. And here our robot will depend on Python. Okay, so uh, Python for Rust. So we will uh, create RustPy, which is uh, the Python API of Rust. So this is uh, successfully created. I will open my um, editor and yeah so uh, okay so uh, we'll see that we have already these two files created by ROS and we will create here um, a Python program let's call it uh, mover right mover.py okay like uh, the name of the, the topic uh, name of the program sorry so the mover uh, we want uh, we said let's, let's see in the here in the slide we say that our program need to publish messages to the common value topic so we will, we need to create a publisher okay so let's uh, first import rospy and create a publisher here like uh, let's call it publisher this variable uh, which is uh, rospy dot publisher with capital p and uh, we need to to specify here the uh, the name of the topic which is command velocity okay so here uh, sorry not here yeah here the command velocity topic without uh, the slash of course so uh, we can we can put the slash it's not a problem okay so command velocity but we need also to specify the the, the tip type of message the type of message that data structures that the command velocity is using and this uh, particular topic each topic has a different uh, type of messages and this uh, type of messages for the command velocity is called twist okay so we will need to import it so let's import the twist from geometry messages dot message uh, okay import twist and here um okay uh, we can enter in the documentation of this uh this geometry messages and here we can see geometry messages which is uh here in the documentation yeah under ROS documentation so we have here the twists 
okay? Oh, so in the twist message, we can see that this express velocity, okay? So the twist message is expressing velocity in two components, linear velocity and angular velocity. And each one of this uh, linear and angular velocity is a vector of three dimensions, okay? The vector uh, containing x, y, and z. So if we want, for example, to move our robot on the x uh, axis or the y axis, I will use uh, the, 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 this 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 uh, this component. Okay, it's a float uh, 64 uh, number. Okay, so let's create it. Here we will create a twist uh, variable. Here, okay, so twist is capital twist. Okay, twist is a twist variable. Sorry, and um, like this, and uh, we, we we say that uh, the twist variable here. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, the twist message here has a linear or angular. So we will need to use the linear velocity. So linear dot linear dot x equals a uh, number, a velocity. Okay, let's say for example 0 0.2. Uh, 0 0.2 which is uh, 20 percent of the maximum velocity. So for example, if, if I use one here, it's uh, it will use the maximum velocity of my robots. So if my robot is moving at 80 km per hour, it will move 80 km per hour. So if I just say here 0 0.2, it will move 20% of this speed, okay? So this is, a, I think this is safer to, to use a small um, a small quantity here, okay? So this twist message, we created this twist message. This twist message, we, we need to, to send it to this topic, okay? So we have the publisher here, and we will just say here, publisher that publish, and we give the the twist message okay it will publish this it will publish this to this uh, command uh, velocity topic okay like in the in the slide like here okay like here it will publish but the problem is that uh, this will uh, publish it only once only once and it will maybe last for for 10 milliseconds maybe it, it's just a small amount of time but we want our robots to continue moving okay to move not just 10 milliseconds but continue moving so we need to, to create here a loop to repeat this this uh, publishing so let's say here um, um, okay let's say um, that just creates uh, an infinite loop here okay while through publish and continue publishing uh, until forever okay that's not smart but it's one way to, to do this so this uh, this is our node you, you see this it's like the hero world for the for the robotics okay let's, uh, let's just clean something else let's here for example for um, the Python let's create here the the main function just it, it's better like this okay and yeah okay so <clears throat> the, this this uh, so our our program here it's this is a python program but we need our ros to consider this as a node so we will need to tell uh, in the beginning beginning of our program that this is a node and let's create a new node for this program so we will here use sourcepy dot init node and we will give it a name for example mover or robot mover like our package rocket mover so uh, here uh, ross will create a node initially is a new node named robot mover and it will execute this okay and uh, just this and this is uh yeah this is the uh, our program we can test this now so let's create let's run um let me just create a simulation uh we will run gazebo gazebo is uh, simulating working with ross as compatible with ross and very very good simulator so <coughs> we will run it here and let's uh, wait until let's uh, yeah so this is this is our simulations and an empty simulation just there is only one robot uh, and we can see here for example that this robot uh, is uh, it, it has like two Two motors here and there is a laser sensor here and if we see for example that there is uh, this for example ross here is running and this laser is uh, 
sending data into in one uh, topic for example these uh, motors are weighting data in the command velocity topic so if we want to 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 list the list of topics here for example let's use this command or topic list and we will see that already there is all these topics all these topics are uh, are created so uh, our ROS is running all this for example here scan in this topic for the uh, laser data and for example odom is topic for the odometry which is position to calculate the position of the of the robot and here this is the command velocity which is what uh, we need in our program to uh, send the command the command the velocity command for the motors and ROS is automatically subscribing to this command velocity and waiting the motors to uh, to run uh, once we get some some command velocity here okay so let's run our program uh, to run our program <coughs> first I need to um, we need uh, uh, to run using ROS run okay and uh, the name of the package which is the folder of my uh, my program and it was robot mover I think yeah and the name of the Python file which is mover that's Py okay so uh, okay we have a syntax error import import twist okay um, okay here from geometry messages import twist yeah just small typos sometimes and here we go we have our program and the robot is moving as you can see the robot is moving and moving and will continue moving to I will here it will continue moving uh, forever because we didn't uh, set, set it to stop we, we have like here an infinite loop okay let's stop this and stop this simulation and continue here so while true publish and the robot is continuing publishing okay this, this, this is just a, a small example of how using the ROS and uh, yeah just to, to, to see and I, I put the, the code in the slide and later I can I will share the slide with you so you can find the, the, the code with some uh, uh, here uh, some comments okay so and I execute this uh, this code in uh, a simulation as you can see here I put it for uh, three seconds and stopping so it stop here and uh, I execute the same code in the real robot here in our laboratory in uh, at uh, used to Oran University at the uh, laboratory of intelligent system we have p3dx robot here and ex executed the same code here in the, the same robot and you see I, I set here three seconds to 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 move three seconds and stopping and this this code the same code is uh, executing in the real robot you see so uh, for example here I don't have access to the laboratory during the weekend so I can just create my programs in the simulation and when I get to the robot the real robot I just upload my my, my, my publish my, uh, my my code here in this robot and the robot will execute and I see I, I know that my code is will, will be executed in the real robot because it's working well on the simulation and this is a good point in in, in ROS because before that for example in Arduino robot when we have to create a simulation you are not sure that your robot your program will uh, be executed successfully on the real uh, robot but in ROS you can see that uh, this is uh, uh, not a 100 percent guarantee but it will usually work on the real robot and this is great about ROS that's why I really love ROS and it will uh, it helped us uh, gain a lot of productivity here and focus only on the most important part of our uh, job okay so in conclusion what's ROS uh, ROS in operating system if, if you you need to to just remember this that ROS is an open source middleware for robotic application it's widely used 
in the, the research and industry. It's like 10 years of using uh, people using uh, ROS in industry as no is mature and a very uh, famous uh, platform on in, uh, in the industry of robotics. And it allows us to abstract the hardware and network layer. So we will use, uh, we will have increased our productivity and it allows us an easy transfer from simulation to real robot. And also keep in mind that ROS1 and ROS2 are evolving together until uh, 2025. So we can use them uh, together. Okay, so I think that's it. And uh, yeah, so thank you for listening. Uh, I will put the slide as usual uh, in this uh, link. Okay, so thank you. If there is some question, I will answer them in the chat. And uh, salam alaikum. Bye bye.